The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 760 Almost like normal. Valet wrinkled her nose, sitting on her back in a chair with her legs up as comfortably as she could given her injuries, and staring inquisitively at a mug of frothing liquid, a small patch bubbling on her tongue. This stuff is weird. It has, like, bubbles. <laughs> Saffron laughed. Have you never had something fizzy before? Really? I thought Sosa was known for their beer, the pink mare said, still having given no name. At this point, Olay was starting to feel she wasn't supposed to ask. Didn't you live in Iron Ridge? Valet shrugged. Yeah, but Sosans were sad all the time and mostly used alcohol to forget their lives. I was living the high life, so why bother? At least, I sure felt that way at the time. Oh, she blinked. I did troll a lot of taverns just for kicks, though, and I'm pretty sure I never saw them drink stuff like this. Now that's just sad, Saffron huffed. That's no way to get out there and party with your friends. But, uh, don't worry about this here stuff. Figure it wouldn't do for creatures to go about getting drunk at a planning session to save the tournament. But this here is soft cider. But it sure is fizzy. Try some, Pierre urged. Miss Sunflower is very fond of her otherworldly culinary secrets. Perhaps you will have some luck flattering the recipe from her? Saffron drained a whole mug at once, wiping her lips with her telekinesis. Tough luck down it more than me. But go on, tell us what you think. I can down more than you, Randorf muttered, nursing a tankard like it was a baby. Yeah, something tells me you don't count, big guy. Valet stared into the foaming surface of her mug, then dipped it back, tried to chug, and immediately splashed herself, sputtering. Saffron guffawed, purging the spilled cider from Valet's coat over aura. You're supposed to sip it, sugar cube. I didn't think you'd do that literally. Valet wheezed, eyes watering. How was I supposed to know it would do this to my nose? Over her shoulder, Amber had sidled up and was watching with a disapproving frown. Did I really never get you anything like this in Riverfall? Because I know we have fizzy stuff there. <laughs> Diego chuckled. For what it's worth, she's telling the truth about the Ironridge beer. Since they ship it so far, their city's specialty is making drinks that taste good flat. Cuts down on cakes exploding in transit. Tragic, Pierre muttered, shaking his head. What is the working class to do? Drink wine instead? No, no, don't care, Molly managed, her sinuses starting to clear. All right, sipping this time? Eventually, she sat up, eyes widening. Hey, this is actually really good. I know, Randorf cheered. Do you even have an indoor voice? Amber asked, leaning against Valet's chair and raising an interested eyebrow at the huge Pegasus. Randorf bit his lip. Yes, it's not very good at expressing myself. It's a lot easier on the ears, the pink mare admitted. But it is nice to hear a voice you recognize cheering in the crowd during fights. You should hear his real outdoor voice. And by that, Pierre said, sipping his own mug with dignity, she means the only reason he did not deafen you during our duel was to avoid deafening me as well. Randorf winked. Ah, Saffron shook her head. Probably could have taken the two of you to town even if you had wrung her ears out. Maiden two of us with barely a scratch just isn't something we see happen. Ah, <laughs> Avalé uh, looked up from her mug. No hard feelings. It will make for a good story, Pierre explained. When there are as many of us fighting as there are, losing is always inevitable. And since we always remember our losses, it is good for them to happen in interesting ways. Randorf nodded, grinning. Maybe we'll see if we can rig the brackets a little to get you to fight me soon, Saffron chuckled. Out of us few, you, me, and Diego are the ones who are still in. I'd love to get a friendly bout in and see what you're capable of myself. Especially since you're a Sorosian who fights without that weird misfail magic. <laughs> Never thought I'd see the day. Valet blinked. You want to fight me? I mean, sure, don't get that a lot. 
You seem like a good enough sport, the pink mare answered. You're nicer to talk to than we had feared. And Diego vouches for you. Diego nodded sagely, draining the rest of his mug and moving for a refill. Saffron's aura flicked a barrel tap, her horn longer and more slender than an average unicorn's, to go with her thinner, more angular frame. Well, sure. Everyone deserves a chance to make a good first impression. Yeah, my first impression, Valet's ears went down. I mean, you guys have clearly heard stories about me. Saffron leaned in in interest. Oh, we telling stories now? Call me interested. What's in your colorful path, sugar cube? Ah, uh, Valet fidgeted. Yeah, see, I used to live in Iron Ridge, which totally doesn't follow the Griffin Empire's rules, and Meltdown was right there a minute ago. Don't you worry about her, Pierre dismissed, sharpening a talon. Meltdown cares about enforcing laws in the here and now, not waging holy war against acts committed long ago in other nations. Amber came to Valet's defense. Maybe one of you go first, if we're sharing stories instead? Safra nodded, and Pierre shrugged. Randorf and I go back a long way, the Griffin explained. We grew up in Wilderwind, joined a mercenary band as youths, became friends, and formed a duo of Blade and Brawn. But I discovered an aptitude for mess duty, and we left together to get rich in the city. Outside of tournament season, he is now an acrobat and stunt stallion for a traveling performance troupe, and I am a professional chef. The pink mare cleared her throat. I'm a cartographer. I used to work as a navigator when shipping was more common. I was born in Goldfeather, but grew up on the sea sailing with my father's merchant ship. I learned to fight, training with his crew against pirate boardings, and got good at it enough to be where I am today. Did I ever catch your name? Amber asked, still leaning against Valley's chair. Sorry if I missed introductions. I'm Amber, by the way. She offered a friendly smile. Um, maybe you didn't, the other mare said, hiding an eye behind her frizzy blue mane. Saffron sighed heavily. Her name is Shale, which is a beautiful name and means money up in Vastadale. She's just a little sensitive right now because that sore toad and scalawag Yulio made fun of it the other day hard enough to break her concentration and get it to throw her battle. Bananas, that's rude. Lily frowned and Shill shrank slightly. I mean, it's probably something I do too, but only against someone who really deserved it. She didn't do anything first. Shill mumbled something unintelligible and Saffron gave an apologetic smile. So, how about me, though, she asked, trying to change the subject. Surely you're wondering what someone with a fine, dainty bar like me is doing in as rough and tumble a sport as this one. Gotta admit, I kinda have, Amber whistled. Take it as a compliment, but you look good, girl. Ha, huh, well, I get that a lot. Saffron stretched, showing off her sharp chin in unusual proportions. Short answer is, my mother was a noble and my father was an apple farmer. Being literally born in a barn has a bit of stigma among certain crowds, and looking all prissy and delicate and being a hornhead doesn't get you far with others. So, once I was old enough, I said see ya to both of them and went out to become an adventurer and make my own way in the world. Best choice I ever did make. Ask her where she is from, Pierre muttered, sipping daintily at his cider. You're an eager fellow, aren't you? Saffron flicked at him with her telekinesis. You think my looks are exotic? I'm from Equestria. That's what we call the Plains of Harmony. End of chapter 760